Thank you. Thanks everyone for their patience tonight. Um, tonight is the July 25th AHRB meeting. The first item on the agenda is 12 Livingstone Avenue. We have a letter from that applicant who is requesting another extension. Uh, we will make a motion we continue this to the next application. May your second. Unanimous. It's continued. 71 Mohican Park Avenue, the Johns residence. I don't believe we received any drawings. Nothing new. Uh, can uh, motion to continue 71 Mohican Park. Yeah, okay, your second. Okay. Unanimous. 60 Belden Avenue. interrupt for a minute. Would you take the microphone, introduce yourself, okay. and use it for the duration of your presentation, our conversation? Here leads right into the kitchen. So there's there's no buffer in between. Um, the only other is access from the front porch. The garage is in the back, and there are a set of stairs to the rest of the dining room without any landing. So that's a pretty dangerous situation right there. They have Conversation. We wanted to just make that uh, side stair, or the back stair, into the dining room, give it a landing, um, and and a stair so that it was it wouldn't be a hassle. Um, and in doing so, we just we made it up to the made this push the stair off to the side so that.
What is the minimum side yard setback? The side yard setback here is 10 feet. Okay. Do you have a variance for this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's our The door en enters into the dining room. Is that a new opening? Yeah. It's an existing opening. Are you widening the opening? No. We're not doing anything with that. Okay. So you're just We're you're just building a new stair to replace the old stair. Is that right? right. You're, you're widening it a bit in the process. Okay. Right. We're renovating the door. You know, we're just we're just trying to make it less. It's a harmonious addition, clearly. Um, uh, uh, they don't want to do anything on the other side where you've got all that uh, space. On the room to spare, the elbow room? No. Yeah, there's no, uh, it doesn't work for that building. Well, no, I understand. For the kit, for the mudroom and kitchen, you need it on that side. Yeah, and they're not, they don't have the funds to build a whole addition right now, so they want to make this, this work. I sympathize, yes. <laughs> Very often doing the same thing. Okay. Um, I, I don't think anyone else has any comments or no. questions. Um, no. Anyone here? Is that, um, the deck is part of the, the, the deck was a recent addition and it needs to be submitted. Uh, updated drawings need to be submitted to the. So we are only, uh, only, only voting for the. Uh, Sorry. Mandrel. The deck? I th you mean the stair? This well, there was just stairs coming out of the slider in the back. Now there's a little deck. It's like a landing. Yeah, I, I guess I saw this as part of a stair more than anything else because because of the way it works. Or, or uh, the, the one with the double doors. Yes. Where we're taking out just the, yeah, just the stair. Oh, 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 the so. <clears throat> so look for south elevation. That looks like it's part of the application at the moment. Um, why don't we just call those out, those okay. materials out, and well, I see no reason for you to come again okay. if we can resolve that now. Um, do you want to put some notes on here that the um, the railings, the balusters are going to match um, uh, the the new the new addition um, railing and baluster, which is in fact matching the original. A stair landing that's on the side of the house, and then if we call out the uh, the decking material, um, I think we can we can finish this up now. Okay. Uh, the, the current uh, landing at the, the front of the stairs is the poured concrete. Okay. Um, that actually that concrete which has like a, a textured. Painted stucco, coated CMU to match existing. Okay. Um, painted wood railings to match existing. I mean, I don't know what you're matching because the front porch doesn't have. So, yeah, it's, but it's, it's the old. It's what's on the side. Or what, 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 what you're demolishing. Yeah. Um, we can, I, I see no reason we can't include that. Any other comments? No. So. Thanks. Hi. Yeah, make a motion to approve this application as submitted. Second. I'm second. second. Okay. Unanimous. Thank you. Irvington Street. Uh, Ed, uh, says he's on the way we'll put put you on to 
the end. Uh, if yeah, five Atilda Avenue. He's on his way. He's on his way too. Five Atilda Airport continuation. Okay, understood. So uh, motion to continue five Atilda. I'll second it. Yeah, your seconds. It's unanimous. Um, do we have a uh, 100 Main Street? No. I see we have some neighbors expecting 100 Main Street. Um, have we heard from Mr. Stein Schneider as to whether he will be here tonight? He's, he's aware that he's on the agenda. Okay. I didn't hear otherwise. Well, I should have taken my time with my haircut. <laughs> you got a haircut today? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I said a little before and after on you, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> Take a short break. Yeah. Where? Yes, exactly. Coffee. Is it? There's no bar in the back. Um, all right. We will. Uh, we'll give. Um, well, I, I think we can look right at 13 or Yeah. I, 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 Yeah, it's pretty thick. Mr. Pisa, would you like to come up? You, you may, we may be able to resolve this uh, without Mr. Mayor. I mean, that's fine. He's going to be here for about five minutes, but he looks well. Take the mic. Um, I'll do my best. Yeah, if, if there's a if there's a big question, we'll we'll review. But um, the, the decks are uh, as long as they're. This reasonable is a legalization of a um, deck built by the former owner okay. that was too large and unstable. So what Mr. Marin is drawing here is the uh, supporting members to make this structurally sound and uh, removing the portion of the deck that was too close to the property. Okay. Now, there's so we have... Uh, do we have an existing portion of this deck that's not been, that does not meet the side yard setback? Is that yes? Yeah, so it's being removed. That so <coughs> all the portion. To this plan. Yeah. It's, right. so it's actually on the neighbor's property because I know the neighbor very oh, well. Oh, it's on the neighbor's property. I know your neighbor very well. I know <laughs> Jotun. Right, and I, I just repaired some of her. What you saw. Yeah. I, I no, I spoke to your neighbor just now. I said, did She's you? Lovely. She's lovely. The the one on the left. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I hope the one on the left is lovely because they are very good friends of mine. So. <laughs> She's a very nice one. So is her mother. They had no objection to that. No objection. I, well, let's give uh, Brandon a few more minutes. He's a bit more rigorous of the. Go. I'm good. Uh, okay, I think this is pretty straightforward. Uh, make a motion to approve this application as submitted. Second. Uh, your second. Unanimous. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I've seen details, I get all excited. What a change So, uh, do you want to just look at the sign? Yeah, the sign is fine. Um, we're going to look at the sign for 26B Main Street. to approve the sign at 26B Main Street as submitted. Do you have a second? No, I'm good. Okay, yeah, your second. It's unanimous. Uh, 
100 mains. now instead of four, three two-bedroom units. Um, it's obviously uh, much smaller, less opportunity for us to perhaps have fun with some of the design things, but we think we'll put something together that's fairly um, calm and easy to deal with. Um, we do have <laughs> renderings that I can show you on the screen if that would be helpful. Okay, what if we can get it going? The, the color helps, uh, you know, the I'd like to get it on the screen for yeah. everyone. Do you have a stuff on it. I'll download it first. <laughs> <laughs> Kingston? 
I really don't know. <laughs> I'll kill you, Patty. <laughs> oh, you know what? It is because I downloaded his book. That is correct. The laptop. The laptop. This one, this one. Oh. Sorry. It's just blocking the bottom half. Yep. Thank you.
Can you explain again what that colored connection is achieving? It's connecting to the parking? Um, it's actually, no, it's this little section right here. Yeah, that connection. What, what we've got as an issue before us is that the interpretation has been that you may not have more than one primary building on a parcel of property in the building of South Jersey. There are many properties that do have that. But the opinion is that that's not permitted. So if this is the primary, this becomes an accessory structure. And you can't have residential units in an accessory structure. If the two buildings are connected, then it's a single building. Unless the Board of Trustees decides to grant a waiver for that and allow it to be two structures without that rule. So refresh my memory then, if you connect it and call that as one property and one structure, the zoning for the front applies to the whole structure. This is not the same problem as 75. This is one piece of property zoned DB. So we're, we're fully compliant with everything here as it currently is. You know, the, the only issue here is whether this is one building or two buildings. If it's one building, mm -hmm. there's no issue. If it's two buildings, um, there's the opinion that it then needs either a waiver or we would have to make a physical connection with condition space. But we have not found anything in the code that says that. We haven't found anything in the state code that says that this wouldn't be considered an attached structure because that's combustible construction tying everything together. So we're not trying to make an opinion on it. What we're trying to do is present it and let the boards make their decision. We sh what we showed to the planning board had a second floor addition connecting the two buildings, changing the plan of the upstairs bedrooms so that that would become something that you, you could come in at your first floor level and go up the stairs and come in at your second floor level. It doesn't make any real sense in terms of function. Mm -hmm. um, and from everything that we've gotten from the comments um, that people have sent in, the connection to it here is not desirable. So, but in reality, it's, Three buildings. I mean, well, just in, just and I, and I wanna I wanna I, we're not going since we know we're not gonna we're not voting on this we're just right. we're discussing it. I I wanna I wanna be cautious about the overtly technical only interpretation because it sometimes misleads the conversation. I think that there's clearly three buildings on here. It could be argued that there that the that the new stuff is one building because there is a there is some relationship but they they read like separate structures those two um and then the you know the main existing building that fronts on main right. um so
so you know that, that's one one concern, I, and and I think that attaching a bridge to an existing building doesn't make it one building. I you, you there are bridges that that connect uh, buildings in the Chelsea neighborhood of New York City where uh, you connect across the street. It doesn't make it one building. There's still two separate buildings. In the past, those functioned as as you know one type of program. A hospital that expands and it's a bridge of street, that sort of thing. But you know, I think so. I think the bridge, even if you enclose it, is still uh, in essence not a doesn't create one building. I think you still have a problem. Whether, whether how, how the Board of Trustees wants to see that is obviously up to them. Mm -hmm. I see it is that you have, you have two separate tickets. Um, I, uh, so I have, there's something a little funny about that. Idea. Well, don't forget, we also are trying to comply with the design guidelines for the downtown. And with the design guidelines for the downtown specifically instruct us to do on a property like this, is to try and break it down so it has the feeling of being sworn to vote. And all of the discussions Part of those, yeah. Yeah, if you go back and look at the earlier schemes that we had, where this was one structure. With well, I would, I will say the the first very early on, you did have that one structure, right? But it was enormous, and that was a that was the problem with it is that it was, you know, it was a it was a tongue in cheek. Uh, uh, it was it was a serious yeah. submission looking for twelve residential units in total, and that was what we submitted, and we heard the comments from both this board and from the Earth and from the planning board, and we've done a series of reductions that now have us with a two-story structure above parking um, with a one-story structure as integral to it. There's, I don't think there's any interpretation that we could argue if there was an advantage to being two buildings that, say, Ed would accept that these two structures could be two separate buildings. They don't have a fire separation they're built simultaneously. The difference is the cladding and the type of roof line. So this is one structure built at one time. This, I agree, is a second structure. And the argument about whether a roof connecting two structures makes it a single structure or not is not a matter of the design concept. It's a matter of previous interpretation of the village child's fair. When we came before um, this board, and requested a connection between a garage and a house on two different occasions. With a breezeway, we were told that if we connected the garage to the house with a breezeway, that would make it a single structure. And we would then have to have the garage comply with the setback requirements for being a primary, not an accessory structure. Accessory is a lot of five foot side yard. In one of the cases it was 10, in the other case it was 20. In the case where it was 20, the Breedland's house, we had adequate uh, side yards, so we were able to build the Breedland. Um, for the uh, house that we did up on Castle Hill Close, the garage was five feet from the property line, so we were not permitted to build the Breedland. This is not the same case. I think it's, I, I, understand, I understand that that logic and why you would want to apply it here, but I don't think it's, it's, uh, it's not, it's a completely different set of problems and constraints, right? I mean, one I don't is, disagree. And so, I, so, I, so, I, so that as a defining precedent of no, the no, definition of this as one, as one structure is a stretch. This has been presented to us as an issue. We have worked with all the boards now for two and a half years trying to find a solution on this. When we went to the planning board, the feeling of the planning board was having the connection space to the second floor level was a distraction from the design. I, and I wouldn't disagree with that. Okay, I, so you know, we, we <clears throat> made the design consistent with what they asked us to do, and now we're presenting it to this board. If this board felt yeah. that, because again, this board should probably be focused on the architectural components of it, and not on the zoning issues. I, we're, we're not talking, we're, we're talking about the reading of the whole building. Like right. what, so, what, what, what we see when we look at the project presented so because all, and, and those things have a tangential relationship. about this connection, can I explain what that connection does? Yes. Um, if we're up to me, um, I actually, I don't know, I don't mind having that connection. I think it's, it, it, I, I think it ties the roofs together in a, in a reasonable way. It's, you know, it makes a roof that's against the building. 
Let's see where that goes. So, so Let's see. and this, what this board could do is it could say we see no advantage in having that roof connection. <laughs> Our preference is that it be done without it. That's fully within the kind of recommendation we be able to make. And if the board of trustees is going to consider um, doing it in some way, Sure, go ahead because I because I think one of the one of my major concerns about the building is the is the, the floating appearance of a large portion of that. And if you if we, you can see it in the elevations and in some of the three D views, um, and I think that that is in large part due to this. It's a bridge like structure that you that you're building right. over well, these over the six parking spaces. Although the building comes down to the ground in on, the, on both sides of it. It only doesn't come down to the ground facing the aqueduct where there's a wall that comes up um, almost as high as the space. I know, maybe we can circle back around to that at some point and maybe, maybe there are other solutions we looked at that would allow the base to appear more solid. Well, we, we, had a, uh, we had a design that had no parking on the site. I remember that. I was in favor of it uh, when we had our joint session. Um, yeah. However, that's a very unpopular idea. And yeah. so I, I think the planning board um, pushed for the Well, the, the joint con the consensus of the two boards together was that the issues were three things. And one of them was that the parking for the project had to be located on site. Yeah. Right. So Sale. the issue that's been brought up is whether or not it's permissible to have parking behind a building that's on Main Street on the ground floor level, which of course, well, this is actually the second floor level. As the street comes up, it's the ground floor level. Um, it'd be 
you go to the design guidelines, the design guidelines make it very clear that the frontage that they're talking about of being non-residential is on specific streets. Ashton Avenue, Broadway, Cedar Street, or Main Street. Main Street north of the library. Um, there's actually other information. That, well, this is all goes to the fact that this is consistent with everything that's been put in the design guidelines. But if we go to this drawing and we say this is Main Street, this is shown as an example of something that is acceptable. So if this is Elm and this is Main, having parking on the ground floor behind the building was considered as something that was acceptable in the building. So I think the argument that you cannot have parking on the ground floor level on Elm Street, um, I don't think that that stands. Um, I think the only other uh, comments that came from that same direction had to do with the existing building and its condition. Um, Planning board members spent some time on that, and members of the planning board actually went out and did a careful analysis of it. And one of the statements that was made at the meeting at which it was recommended to be approved by Rob Lane made it very clear that he had looked at it. He did not see any advantage of trying to destroy that building. He made a very clear statement on it, and I think that's what should stand. This is a photograph looking at that property um, that's existing, um, and this is what it would be like with um, what we're proposing. Uh, obviously slightly different angles, but the feeling of there being a gap between the two structures is something that we try to uh, retain as opposed to on the other side of the street where you have a singular wall formed by the amalgamation of the different uh, building blocks. Um, the only other thing, can we just have some shots of what the actual building is? shows um, the existing conditions with what were proposed, superimposed on top of it. So you can kind of understand exactly how the massing relates. Anything you want me to go back on? Could you go back to SP2-1, which is your elevation sheet? <clears throat> Explain a little bit of the, the top two drawings. I'm yeah. seeing a, a void through the middle here. Is that right? Yeah. And so from the street, from Elm, looking this south, is, you right, are looking building, through the building. Right. This this wall is on the back side, not on the. Elm why why doesn't that wall continue up? Why wouldn't you create a base for the building? Um. Because, because my, my, you know, my, I'm, what I'm getting at is, is that I, there's a, the building is, uh, sort of kind of is floating in a. Yeah, but before ah. before the feet floating, there is a span of 43 feet. It's what? 43 feet. It's a span of 43 feet. On the uh, uh -huh. on the parking. Right. I understand that the design was not having a structural minimum structure. Right. and I see that there is a couple of feet here and. Uh, What's the ceiling height of the uh, department? Nine feet. Yeah. So you, should, you should be able to have a. We can have a very good like size ceiling in the area for us. I mean, I think any any uh, post in there is going to no, be. No, a post is a post. Yeah. No, but what we're trying to avoid is, is you know, doing this whole exercise of. No, we the application and then the structure of the is a little close. Yeah, we have nine feet and then we have two feet for the floor thing. Yes. So we have basically three feet to be able to accommodate beams and structure. And one of the things I'm leaning to on this is that it might make sense to do that whole base as poured concrete. So that you'd actually be able to um, do reinforced concrete for the, for the thin walls, supporting the slab, and then build the uh, structure on top. Uh, coming back to something that Michael is saying, I, I think what it is about the building is this middle portion is much wider than the two ends. Typically, I'm a big fan of floating the middle portion. It always looks very elegant. 
somehow it just doesn't make it in this design, and I think it has to do with the proportions again. Okay, again, the proportions on this are both. If there's some way, as Michael said, one way is to maybe bring that wall a little higher so it won't look like there's such a huge void. Well, one, one thing here is that this wall is on right inside the property line. Right. And it's intended to screen the headlights and that from the neighbors. From the neighbors, yard. right. If we want to have it connect to these two walls. It's connected, right? No, it's not. Look, it's enough. like, do you see this? Thing? This is that half wall. The back wall? Yeah. Oh. It's, that was the result of conversations with the building engineers. We wanted additional space for people if they were backing up to the two spaces to be able to back up. Okay. So the position of that wall is set so that that can work. No, I'm talking about the half wall. It's this half wall, right? Yeah, yeah this half wall. So why can't that half wall come up a little bit or maybe <clears throat> something that oh, it, it frames taller. so that it doesn't look it could yeah, definitely be taller, or, or perhaps would be better is that instead of oh, this wall, these walls wall don't wall, align. Maybe what could happen is that this could be more like a screen wall on top of the breakfast. So, anything so that it doesn't feel like this, you know, it's it's off. Well, that that it is off because you have this wall, which is in one plane. Right. You've got three planes of right. walls here. Which is nice, actually. I like I like it being broken up. You know. By the way, the three stories is a vast improvement on the four stories for sure. Thank you. Thank you. As, as is in finding a solution for an interiorized corridor, which I think we all struggle with a lot. You know, you know that comes naturally with the, with the reduction. So I think a great idea is that this is more like a screen wall above the brick, I think that could work fine. I think visually at least something that looks like it's more anchored because yes. it's just, I think it's too wide for well, the two sides. Well, we could carry this up and we could actually have the equivalent of a free select to connect it back to the beam. And it would Maybe be if you just do like a little light structure that kind of. I think, I think it's going to seem more massive than I think the fun thing about a free select here with the lattice wall is that, yeah, that would be something that get, leaves you it's enough a, that it feels like it's carry yeah, right, that's what he's that's what he's talking about. You're going to pass it down here. I think it's a clock. So, yeah. you see. Yeah. So, we've solved it on the side that it doesn't, uh, isn't visible on the other side. Um, so, there's no way to do that unless we were to put the right door on it, uh, which I don't think would be improved. Patty, what is a snow, what is a snow storage area, which is um, on that back area? Well, That's first it. of all, you got to realize we're covered. So our site is we're going to have very little snow on our property. Um, but the idea of that wall in back was that you would be able to uh, get rid of any snow by coming out against that back wall. So they're going to plow snow through the driveway Sometimes into that wall. Yeah, they're that they don't know. The, the only place you're going to get snow is in the. Front courtyard? Yeah, I mean this in this back in the south elevation, there's the little half height wall. Yeah. It's not aligned, obviously, it goes out to the planters. Right. But this area on the floor plan is called a snow storage area. Right. So aesthetically from the outside, it's literally you're gonna push the snow through the driveway and pile it on the back side of the you'll be, you'll be clearing the snow. You can't push the snow out the street. I agree. I know I just want to so make sure I understand what that is gonna a, function as. Yeah, that was something that was and that function would not be changed if we if we put a Bruce Soleil in Madison. Aesthetically, when you look at it from the aqueduct, though, you see a garage because of it. Because of that wall? Well, because of that open area. 
I don't know that you see that from the aqueduct. Well, I'm looking at your rendering that shows well, that. Yeah, but the rendering doesn't show all of the stuff that's in the neighbor's yard. If we opaqued everything out, um, it would really be helpful. Um, when you're walking by Just, the aqueduct, the aqueduct is actually about even the base of this uh, the floor level. So Can you go back to your colored rendering? So you can go back, yeah, that one. That one. Yeah. So from, the, I mean, regardless of what foliage is there and whether this is actual or not. This is not. But we, we intentionally left everything out the screen in that. So okay. So you can see the building. Um, this is what we're talking about, the building mm -hmm. lattice structure on top of and then a breeze away coming back behind it in. But the idea of what you can really see in there as you're going by is very limited. It Frank, really is. Frankly, I think it's a mistake to have this open like that. I, I think it, um, I still have trouble with the, with the center floating element uh, that's revealed as, well, I know, but it, it's also, I, I don't I have there's no turning radius diagram on here. I don't know if it's required. No, that's, that's not something that's still before any board. That was done last time. Which one? The piece Anything of wall to do with the engineering of this was already signed off by the village engineer. I'm worried about the aesthetic look from the aqueduct. Right. I'm less, the and, and also the aesthetic look looking north. I agree that, I mean, as you look through, and even in this rendering, it looks enclosed, so it actually looks a little bit better than the floating structure that you would that you're seeing in some of the other elevations. This, and that's, this, I think it's because of the foliage directly behind it. But this actually tells the story of what it would look like right. enclosed. Which I think it's actually more appealing. You don't see straight through as much, and you can be a little bit playful. Whatever you put in the back, especially if you move that wall in to enclose that area in the back, you still see a parking lane going in. Right. But you, uh, I mean, it, it literally this literally tells the story of what it would look like almost fully enclosed in that back area. Plus, I think it's more appealing from the aqueduct side, just as a. Just from, from a pass or go, going just looking down at the actual building itself. With the lattice and the breeze away, we guarantee that that occurred year round. Because right now you lose the uh, leaves on most of the foliage there, mm -hmm. most of the foliage is uh, deciduous. So in you know, February, when you're walking along the aqueduct, you'd have a better view into it than we're saying that you won't. So I think it's a good idea to think about uh, doing the lattice and the breeze away. This is not when, when, when we're talking about the span of this, and it's not as well as span is from that side to there. No, no, no. The span, the span that we can see the is perpendicular to it. Right. And, uh, and, and, and the. Okay, so let's, let's start by saying that uh, massing wise is, I think, the, the massing that we see now is appropriate. Okay. Uh, I think that it's on its way to be something pending material detailing resolution but it's you know the main problems that we're discussing now is now are probably details in the right direction okay. on my on my opinion now my a big challenge of this is of course marrying this parking floor with what's coming upstairs especially in that on that building, on the front building, let's, let's keep the barn aside for a second. We have a building that is well, say, sits well on the right side, but on the left side is floating. And the way that relates to the aqueduct is is something that I'm scratching my head on how to solve it because it, it looks like it's, it's about to tilt. Yeah, I mean, if the, if the center portion continued through, it would appear to sit on this other port, right. on the, the barn structure. But because it doesn't, because you break down the roof line there, and I understand why, it, it looks, it's imbalanced. I will I mean, I'm, I don't know. That's, that's the biggest Something, part. something that is not You understand working. what I might? I, I do, I, and we do have an extra parking space that Get away with one of the parking spaces and reduce it to five. No, we could then change the way that structure works. 
That may not be the solution. Maybe the solution has to do more with. Yeah, I'm just looking at ways where maybe you, you pull this piece over, or you pull this piece we, over, or you frame here in some, I uh, you know, obviously I haven't you, looked at this right now. the meetings we've been at, and the comments that we've heard, the, uh, the only thing I'm going to have problems with is when it starts to be, to do something we proposed that we were told how bad it was. But the, this, kind of this is not something you proposed. It. We, 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 we've been we, talking about a building that had another story. We, we, for we had this same high building coming over to here. Okay. And making use of the second floor on this structure, and that was absolutely unacceptable because this structure has to appear to be as though it's the old corruption. Okay. I don't have that in front of me, so I, I don't know. So, what let's say that we have this, yep. and that works. Of course. Now we have this issue to deal with, and we're trying to come up with a solution. Yeah. That's it. Right. So, an, an option that we could be turned to the floor plan would be. Don't go, don't go too fast and give a solution of killing one parking space. Well, I'm not, I'm not being facetious about it. I'm no, saying, no, no, I'm that saying that don't, this, don't, don't rush into it. Okay. If we had three spaces here and two spaces there, that's one space for each apartment, which is what the requirement is. If we then brought this wall in okay. so that it matched this wall and did something that tied that together, okay. that, I think, would be directly addressing what you're talking about. Isn't the upper portion of the barn sitting on this wall? Yes, and it would be sitting on this wall too. No, what I'm saying is, uh, I'm sorry, working, I'm working on these directions. Right. So, what are you proposing? That we can bring, we can eliminate one of the parking spaces, and bring this thing's wearing down the battery. Bring the wall in on this, and by doing so, have a structure that comes across the top of that, so that it feels like this is a more solid base. So you just you're filling in. Right, and we we do the same on this end too. You know, we could bring that. I mean, that this could be. Um, you know, that could be a wall down. We've we've offered, and it's been accepted, and I, it'll be up to the board of trustees whether they want to go one direction or the other. There's concern with the maintenance of this wall. Mm -hmm. So what we've represented to the the um, uh, state park system was a willingness that we would only have. Three structural points in front of that wall. We would grant them an easement um, to work on that wall from this property, and, they, and we would we would expose that wall so that their existing retaining wall could be something that's part of the experience of the. the uh, oh, so, uh, so this is this is open here. Right. Chadi, really, the weak point is this line coming down. It almost feels like it's coming down on nothing. I think it's just a visual. That's why, you know, when Michael drew this, you know, there's something yeah, here. Know, really it is really, it just feels yeah. well, this, not right. I mean, so that's, if you can think about that without killing do, a parking spot. Well, you know, this is a very small piece of property. That's been yeah. proven to me meeting after meeting, how small this is and how it can't support more than a certain amount. If we are going to enclose anything to not have the feeling of it being open, which I understand and I do not disagree with as an issue, then we're going to need, to, it's not like we can shift it over and take that acre and use it instead. We've got a very small site, the way to do it would be to not have that parking space. And then we can do, we have complete control over those walls, and we can do exactly the suggestion that Michael drew. Um, we could do this, this one, we've got options on there and that could be made to work. I mean, we've treated it as a structure here, which seems very clear, and a structure here, which seems very clear, and then this bridges across the top. I, I, I get it, and, and maybe it's not the openness that's, maybe the openness is fine if the thing is balanced better, maybe if it's gonna stay here, it needs this other solution you were talking about with the where we wrap the wall in. I, I don't know the right one because we're not sketching. We're tossing around right. ideas here, but I mean, I don't know why this kind of thing would be a 
problem for you necessarily. Well, it's not a problem for me. Yeah. It, when we had a roof that extended out over... I, I know, but uh, I'm not uh, asking you to come over here, and I'm not asking well, you to be you up don't here. Don't you think this feels like it's an arbitrary I, point to be I, I don't know. My sense, Michael, my sense, Michael, is that we transfer now the problem to here. Right. Yeah, maybe. And we may there is nothing to. down to... When you walk... Still yeah, this, the this, same this, yeah, this what this edge I think aligns that with the structure. This is a wall. natural edge. This is a natural edge. Right. I break. understand completely yeah. right. what you're saying is because it's that wall that's coming through one is here and the other one is there. So if I think you, to make Michael's work the way you do that is you'd have to bring that to this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I know we, we, we don't, don't, don't want to push um, that. You know, I think th this works this works very nice. Right. And, and bringing, I mean, just so everyone's aware, bringing that over, that's just a different kind of roof on that section. It doesn't increase our square footage or anything else. So if, you know, if this It's board, over the closets or whatever that is, right? Something it's over the bathroom and the closet. Bathroom and the closet. And those have a flat ceiling. And, because and I looked at it and see why you had that flat maybe roof. The breach. Well, the, I don't, it's, unless okay. you're going to surprise me, I don't think you're planning to make a decision tonight, so... Um, well, we need the, you, materials. What you've done <laughs> is you've talked about uh, what I think are real issues that we can give more thought to. But I would argue, I guess, but I hope I wouldn't have to. I can intend, is that less than saying I'd argue? I can intend that what we're talking about are architectural details. Yeah. It's not about the concept of the site plan. That if the planning board of trustees were to grant approval of this site plan, this board would have the abilities to deal with it at that point, with the one exception, perhaps, of the if we were going to lose the parking space. And that's something I can I can mention tomorrow night that we've talked about. Um, I don't, you know, it, I, in Dobbs right now, giving up a parking space. How many units are there? Five. So it's one spot per building. unit. Right. And that's with the couple cars. So you have six spots. You could yeah. lose one. Except that them. this board is not necessarily recommending you lose one spot. Agreed. We are asking you to see if you can look at this you're asking, issue. You've got a, you've yeah. got a scale there scale. might be some way yeah. of addressing it architecturally. And Let me ask you I don't know. a pointed question. If there was a really good design and it necessitated us having only one parking space per unit, would you want the good design giving up the parking space, or would you say we Parking space is so important. We can't I'd have to judge that when I see it to okay. know what the priority well, I'm is at that ahead point. To where you exactly. Love I will not give you an it. answer this way. So. Okay. The. I mean, I still. If it were up to me, we would still have no parking on this site. We would be building a deck on the parking lot behind Village Hall, and that would be how this would be resolved. But that I'm not the one that makes those decisions. So I'm trying to follow from what I'm being told and what the preferences are. It was clearly stated to be. No, and I do remember Michael arguing against being, if you will, on my side on the parking issue. First time. First time. Last probably time. only time. Last time. <laughs> so the idea is that um, they have they, they basically said compliance with parking is. No, I, I, I know, and I and I I'm no longer with that. I, I want to go back to this wall that separates the building from the aqueduct or the retaining wall. Of the aqueduct. Yeah. Um, is this a continuous opening? So am yes. I seeing all well, There's opening? actually, there's a support in the middle there. It's centered in, there's two lines you see. Yeah, I see it. This yeah. is what, okay. I mean, is this a, is this the easement that you're talking about? So no. that, that work on this no, wall? No, 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 what we're giving them is an easement to use the entire parking lot. So that if they needed to come in and rebuild a section of their, we, we have no way of knowing the condition of that retaining wall. It's been behind this garage since at least 1942. So the idea of that wall, for, that, that wall can be completely shot. So when we take this away, um, if they're going to need to rebuild it, we've agreed to give them the use of the property to basically be able to work. And in order to do that, you, you've got to maintain all of this open area. Correct. Well, they also want to see the wall. Their well, argument is that the wall has important significant, you know, historical significance. So they want the ability for people to walk in and see the wall. Into the garage. Right. <clears throat> so people are going to walk on the private property to look at They'll have an easement to be permitted to do so. Okay. It'd be ideal, but that's what we're, you know, we're giving to that. Now, we bring the wall of that down. 
and I'm not sure how far down it comes, but it can come down further um, than, you know, it basically can come down to the, almost the top of the wall. In order to work on this wall, is there some minimum dimension that is required? For clearance? I think as long as we're above it and not bearing on it, I don't think it matters. No, what I, what I mean is, that let's let's say that this wall needs repairs in the future. They they want they, the the idea is that they will be able to get to that wall whenever they want to get to it. And can they do that if you fill in this this area? No. Well, no. If I fill in above the wall, yeah. If I hung, if we go back, I don't know what this lattice thing looks like. Let's say we've come up with this amazingly cool lattice piece that's on the south side, and we say, you know what, let's bring that around onto the east side and drop hold that down from the structure above so when you walk by the aqueduct what you see is the top of the stone wall and a lattice wall that comes down and sits maybe six inches higher above it. Here's what I here's what I am slowly getting at is that I think for a traditional looking structure like this to sit on a number of independent planes is, is a little funny in a way. I mean I'm not against using that technique if your house is cast in place concrete and rubber. We, or we took this in the direction but, of going very modern on it. Yeah. It was not successful. But, uh, well, you have to integrate this and the barn and uh, it has some trouble. So, but I think yeah. this planar support or appearance of support, because are, are these, uh, these aren't actually bearing walls, are they, the other ones? Which, everything there is bearing. These are all, okay, so it's yeah. not the columns. Um, we, we need, uh, there's something though, there's a little disconnect there with the, with the well, structural approach and the stylistic approach. On the south side, I think we're talking about a potential solution. That south side solution could move itself to the east side as well. Yeah. And there could be a, a lattice type wall, a screen type wall, so that when you go by, you see, you don't, you don't read it as a very modern, thin, uh, Pilote supporting a box floating on top. You know, Rem Cool House, this looks exactly like Rem Cool House would do, except nothing to do with the No, earth. not the structure, though. You design something that he does, and we'll take a look at it. Not right. a problem. I'm not. I'm, <laughs> if I don't look like I've been kicked to the curb, I'm doing a good job. I'm, I have no opportunity or chance to try and do anything interesting with this architecture that would be anything. The, the, I mean, I even tried to change the windows in the barn to have more windows facing uh, north. And that was perceived as a very bad idea because I would lose the simplicity of the single window. True. Okay. So do you believe, back to this, do you believe there's a, there's a possibility of putting in some, uh, some solid appearing but possibly removable element or yeah. this? Yeah. We're, we're referring because to also the, to have a building sit on a, on a delicate lattice is also not, yeah, I, not uh, the uh, route that I would suggest. The material that we're thinking in terms of here is board and batten. Is what? Board and batten. Mm -hmm. So a potential for, I don't know if you can see it anywhere. Yeah, well, sure right here. The potential here would be a board. Songs batten. So what you do is you'd have, say, a one by eight separated by, say, two inches. Yeah, we don't have to figure it out now. I'm just, I'm yeah. just But that, something like that could look very solid. And, you know, it could have a nice detailed trim at the bottom. It makes it look almost a little bit massive in a positive way. Um, and that could, you know, that could make, could, could solve the problem at least on those two sides. I don't think there's any issue of it on the west side. Where you're facing the other building, I think that already feels like it's you know it, you can't really see it, and at that point the only question comes to be that one gap in the middle, and um, that's facing Elm Street, and whether that's bringing those pieces in on the sides a little bit, or whether it's losing a parking space, or maybe you know I mean, the problem is you can't really do anything that makes this stuff work unless you brought the wall back. Yeah, and I, so I, think you, I think some resolution, and, and I, I don't know which one it is, would occur in which the solid appearing base is resolved as a solid appearing base from three right. dimensions, not just from one. 
Um, and I think, you know, it works. When you look at the elevation, it works, but rarely do you see a building like that. You, you just rotate a little around here, and you see the plane. You rotate a little around here, and you see the plane. So I think some, some way in which this turns a corner, this turns a corner. So maybe this is, you know, this is all solid here, and then there's an open section, and with a removable, I don't know, something like this. Oh, a not the conversation for this. Something that we not, it's a lattice I agree is too clumsy sounding, but is that it's got some kind of a screen that, that suggests solidity. I mean, I, that. I don't know what you're required to do with this visibility of the wall. I don't know, maybe it's a, like a window, you know, you create some set that you can look and observe. It's just a wall. I mean, you, you could, yeah, you could, you could actually do windows in what this thing is. Right. You know, just opening. No, but that doesn't address the access for repair. Well, if the, that if, this, if, the, if the wall is, enough. say, this high, yeah. and here's my ceiling, and I'm closing this into here, I don't know that there's any problem with that. You, yeah. I'm standing in the garage, and I'm looking at the wall. I can see the original aqueduct wall right. has been rebuilt in 2016. So it's something that would it would it wouldn't compromise of what we've offered. Okay. Um, so so this is this is a request from the Taconic State Park System. Actually, from the New York State. Um, they, they, everybody still says Shipro, but it's different now. It's Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation. Okay, and they asked for that. And you agreed. Yes. Um, so some component of that's going to remain here. However, it can be addressed. Um, we're I mean we're not under an obligation. The, Board of Trustees tomorrow night, or whenever they ever decide they'd like to make a decision on this, could say, you know what, there's a lot of aqueduct stuff that people can see already. We just did the, you know, the uh, overtake, you know, the, the, the house that, you know, where they, where they worked everything from. They, um, the importance of this section of stone wall, I don't know. And if the Board of Trustees said that's not important to us, we'd prefer you to just bring the wall down. You know, that there's nothing that precludes us from being able to. That, I mean, that would be the simplest and the cleanest. I mean, that has been a challenge for us on the 66, 68 Main Street property. You know, how do we do everything we're doing there um, and make it work? Because we set back 10 feet there from the We did have a design for this that also had a 10 foot setback from the aqueduct. You could look at one of those FEMA walls, you know, the knockdown walls, if they would consider doing that. I mean, how often are they going to come and. I, I like the idea of Ayer's windows in Michael's lattice concept that's hung from above and it has a feeling of being those Solid. breakaway walls. I mean, they look like thin concrete things. I mean, you're right. I mean, Whatever works, you know, the, in terms of... We're doing all brick on everything else. So to do that in brick, because if it's concrete, it would want to be brick. And then it's not going to work. Okay. Okay. Whereas the woodwork on this, I mean, that helps break down the mass, too. And that's, you know, maybe we can come in a little bit on the ends with the brick so that it's um, you know, a little bit more... Uh, thickness to that, so it seems more substantial. You know, those fins, if fins went on those two walls and then in the middle, and those were two feet long, that would have a very good view. It's probably more consistent with what you're looking for it to be in terms of having a sense of solidity. Okay, I see we have a lot of neighbors here.
oh great, it's going to be even lower. And then, no, it's on top of the garage. And I don't quite understand where the cars are going to come in to the garage. And maybe it's... it, I think this is a good viewpoint. I, 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 the, the, the new structure that's replacing it is five feet taller than the, than the current one. Because there's a full story of parking underneath. So one turns off of Elm into the courtyard and into this parking lot. Underneath. Yeah, I, I, I got it. It's just that one hears the first part of the sentence that it's going to be lower, and you think, oh, wonderful. And then, no, it isn't. But uh, I don't understand where the cars will be visible from the, the aqueduct. You know, they don't like the idea of seeing cars lined up to get into the, the garage. I don't see the access to the garage on the design. I'm sure you all know exactly where it is. Well, I think that's been the nature of a lot of our conversation, which is that at the moment, there is an opening between the new structure and the aqueduct. And so one can see into the garage and look at the cars. There is also an opening at the side, at the south side, where one can see at an angle from a point south of this building into the garage. And I think we're, our attempt is to, yes. is, to is twofold. One, to limit that view, but and two, maybe more importantly for me, is to give the building an appearance of a more solid base, uh, which I think is more in keeping with the, with the aesthetic of the upper yes. portion of the building. Yes, it's hard for you when you don't, when you start talking into your little mics, it's hard for those of us who are in the audience to hear what you're saying to, to the building. Oh, so okay. it's a, I, you, I understand now that you're explaining. I apologize, I need my, will request a bigger mic. <laughs> but it is, it is hard to, uh, to hear, that's why we sit up front. Well, I don't know if we have dimension, but that, that was part of what I was asking about earlier, is that I, and I think it, it oh, here we are, it Six varies. Three, yeah, three and a half on one end. And three foot four on the south end, and no dimension on mm -hmm. the north end. It gets very close.
library science uh, project suddenly discovered the aqueduct that runs from Hastings down to Irvington and Hawaii. It's astonishing. Come and see our guest book. Recent letters? Yeah, last week they sent it and it was supposed to be for the no, record. I did not have those. We did not have those for this. Well, then I will send you my copy. But I don't have your email with it on. You know, we have to send everything to Liz and then Liz has to forward it to you. Yes. But uh, they. And I regularly get your letters and, and, and other people, but right, I did not get that. I will pass it on to you tomorrow. There is historical significance to it. Now, there is, needless to say, it's so important. This, this, the way this Thank you for the 
of anything they want and get away with. It will be after the fact, well, it's up, we have to approve it. So I think you should really, really, really think hard about all of this and not approve this project. to send our notes to the Board of Trustees um, based on tonight's conversation. And we'll consider some of the things that were mentioned just now, uh, along with some of the things we just discussed. Where we, yes, please. Last comments? Okay. We're going to make a recommendation to the Board of Trustees who will be reviewing this tomorrow. Um, I do not believe, I, I, I think we're going to see this for some time. Um, and when I do so, I will take into consideration the things that were just discussed a moment ago. But for now, I will make a motion to continue this to the next application. I'll second it. Yeah, your seconds. <coughs> Unanimous.